Hi, I'm Dennis O'Brien, president of PICO. Welcome to Valley Forge National Historical Park. We're proud to make Valley Forge even more fun and accessible for you and your family. So sit back and enjoy this episode of PICO's podcast through history. Early Americans had made the risky Atlantic crossing seeking a better life, adventure, religious freedom, and political autonomy. They built a society in the new world and for generations ran it with little outside meddling. After the French and Indian War, Britain initiated policies aimed at bringing the colonists under closer control. Tensions grew. Many Americans stood firm in their belief that the king had suspended their natural rights. Increasingly, resistance leaders banded together. The stage for the revolution was set. Is she home? Well, we haven't knocked yet, sir. Go ahead. Proceed. What do you want? Ah, we are here by the order of General Washington to ask you if we could use this building as headquarters for the general and his staff this winter. Knock again. What do you... Oh, it's you. Come on. educational podcast. I know, but it's a little cold outside and it may take a while. Well, it is getting late and I have a hot date tonight. I know, you've been talking about it all day. Well, excuse me, all you ever talk about is knitting. Are you going to tell us or what? Right. right. Well, I guess we should back up a little bit. Let's start at the very beginning. Oops. How about we go back to September of 1777? Can't you get anything right? Go, come on. Our story begins across the Atlantic Ocean to a land far, far away. Back it up, back it up. Better. Now, for years leading up to the outbreak of hostilities, the British Parliament and King George III had imposed increasingly severe measures on their American colonies. Punishing taxes, onerous duties on imports and exports, exasperating laws. Nice. This guy has a really good vocabulary. Quiet. After years of heightening tension, the colonists fired the shots heard around the world in April 1775 at the battles of Lexington and Concord in Massachusetts. Soon after, colonial leaders meet in Philadelphia for the second time, and the Continental Congress creates the American Army with George Washington as Commander-in-Chief. Events in 1776 move quickly. During the summer, 30,000 enemy soldiers arrive in New York. On July 4th, the Declaration of Independence is adopted and in August 1776, Washington's army is defeated at Long Island, and soon after, they evacuate New York City. On December 25th, with army enlistments about to expire, Washington must act. The Continental Army begins its daring Christmas night crossing of the Delaware River. During the dead of night, Washington's army makes an incredible river crossing, leading to victories at Trenton and Princeton, New Jersey. Broke. This gives new life to the cause. Let's fast forward. It's August 1777. British Commander Howe lands his army in Maryland at the mouth of the Delaware River, the Delaware River that leads to Philadelphia. He plans to capture Philadelphia. Washington knows the fight for the Patriot capital has begun, and this could be the beginning of the end. 
General Washington is defeated at Brandywine in September 1777. And by later that month, General Howe and the British have captured Philadelphia. Congress has fled. The streets are filled with redcoats. Is this the end of the rebellion? In the name of King George III, open up that door. Keep knocking. Open up, I say. Open that door. Madam, in the name of King George III, I want my tea. Have you two been listening? Uh, so, the British, the enemy, have captured Philadelphia, right? I mean, Philadelphia is the capital of the colony, so the war is over. Well, you would think so, but it's not over yet. We have George Washington. True, and he does attack the British at Germantown, Pennsylvania. Right. Does he win? Well, we'll talk about that later. But for now, with winter coming on, Washington needs to find a place to put the army to encamp for the winter. So... Let's start, start looking, looking around. around. Special, Special effects! effects. <laughs> okay, the army needs to settle down for the winter. You guys sound like you know what you're talking about. Why don't you join me? Sure. Um, what kind of place do we need? Doesn't Washington need to keep an eye on Philadelphia? Yeah. So I guess the American army shouldn't be too far away. Good. What else? Hmm. A place that is easy to defend in case the British attack. They should try to find high ground, like they had at Bunker Hill. Is there anything else? Lots of open space. Yeah, so they can build huts to stay in. Excellent. This isn't going to work. Why not? It's too close to Philadelphia, and there's not enough open space for the soldiers to build huts and drill. Let's keep looking, then. Mm, not too close to Philadelphia, and lots of open space. How about... This! Oh yeah, we're in the camera. Yeah, it's probably not gonna work for Washington and his troops though. But can we stay here? What do you think? Dang it. <sighs> we're not that close to Philadelphia, are we? Well, it's about a thousand miles. Let's try again. This looks good. How far are we from Philadelphia? 18 miles. Not bad. And look at all that open space! And those hills! Hey, look! What's that house? That could be General Washington's headquarters. Perfect! Well done! Let's go take a look. Unfreeze. And now, Mrs. Hughes, you see why we are here. The entire cause of liberty is at stake. The fate of the revolution is in your hands. I'm convinced. Go get your bag. Find out what happens next. Stay tuned for episode two, coming in two weeks on March 5th, 2008. On behalf of Pico and Valley Forge, we hope you enjoyed your Pico podcast journey through history. <laughs> Thank you.